So how do we start now? <laughs> I'm just fooling around now, you know. <laughs> now, okay. um, today we will talk about strings. <laughs> and uh, my first question to you is, uh, if you short could say which strings you play uh, and which instrument uh, you have. Just to give an impression. What oh, the instrument, this is a Carlo Tononi. Mm -hmm. it's, it's built in Venice in 1730, and I play on this instrument since about 13 years now. And I play on it since I had to give away my Strat, Exergendrance, Stradivarius, and I must say, I'm not unhappy about it. It's a new partner for me, it's a new lover for me, and I love the instrument very much, and it gives me a lot of quality. But again, quality the instrument itself is nothing. It needs my bow, <laughs> it needs good strings, and I need a good combination of all of this. And on that instrument, I found out that the best combination for, for me and the instrument is um, it's all Larsen strings. And the A string is the solo medium, which I play already for many, many, many years. And I have tried other strings as well, but I always came back to that one. And then since the Il Canone exists, I changed from the normal Larsen, normal, <laughs> What, I, what you, could, you could buy before, I, I changed to the um, uh, Il Canone and I like on that instrument very much the clear and focused D string. Mm -hmm. And the same on the C string, that comes very well with this instrument. But the G string I take the warm and broad Il Canone. That's the best mixture, mixture I found out for this cello and my way of playing mm -hmm. together with my bow. I'm playing a, a modern bow. I have lots of bows, different bows, and I practice with a lot of different bows to get a different touch. Every bow has something special, something. But when I go on stage, I need to have one bow where I can do everything with it. Also fill a big hall and all that. And this is a, a Bainio bow. It's a fin Finnish bow maker. He's an old man by now, but he, he makes very, very good bows. It lies very well in the hand, and I can use weight. I can play very soft, and the bow has its own weight here at the tip. So that fits very well with this bow and the strings together with that instrument. But of course, um, with strings, one has to try out a lot because there are possibilities. With instrument, once you buy an expensive instrument, you stick with it. And it's a little bit the same with the bows. You can have a little bit more choice in bows. <laughs> but with strings, you have a lot of possibilities and you always kind of think, oh, this string is not so good, that's not so string. But this is much better. But then you play on stage, you play something, no. No, maybe rather go back and you doubt and you try out. But then you find a tendency, or I found a tendency in myself, that those strings, they just are the best in that combination for me. And I can depend on them. I know their potential. And this is why I play those strings and I'm very convinced about that. It works and I can rely on them. When we talk about the importance of strings, uh, you know, we have these soft notes, uh, these melody lines, and if you could tell a bit more about uh, how the influence you're playing of, ex for example, specifics, the soft notes, the long notes, and then in opposite, the very short ones, when you speak spiccato or something like this. Okay, I'll show you first something with concerning the, the, the D string. Mm -hmm. um, this is a Chopin Prelude. It's, it's a lot the beginning, it's just cello alone, there's no piano. It's an arrangement anyway, but the, the cello plays that melody line. This piece, of course, is original for piano, but it's really written for cello, I think. <laughs> you will n notice what I mean.
the strings, but they're matching well, very well. So the range of dynamic is, is very, it's very, it has a big range and I have many possibilities of do what I want according what I feel, what the piece demands from me. And I'm trying to implement, of course, that with my instrument. And I love it that I can just rely on the strings. Each string has its own character, but they're all blending well with, it, with each other. And with short notes, it's a very delicate thing, actually, usually. All the cellists, including myself, we know that short, light notes, they very easily squeak. And they don't speak very well. And I'm disturbed by that. I don't like it. I like the beauty in the sound, even in short notes. I like quality in the sound. And those strings can give me the quality I want. For example, Senaye Allegro Spiritoso. It's a little anchor piece, actually. This dangerous. See, listen. It was not good. Variations, the beginning of the theme is very, very, very delicate. We're coming out of this silence, the horn plays, da -de -da -de -dum, and it's nothing, and then starts the cello playing with feather like light notes. And they shouldn't squeak. A string, important. demanding. It's not, nothing for show. It's nothing for dough. <laughs> but it's something for, for quality, for ear which likes to hear beautiful things. And the strings need to make me able to believe they can do it, what I want. Otherwise, musically, I'm not free to, to play feather light-like notes. It's so important to depend on it. Um, <laughs> That's a, every note has a quality, and they building all together a line. Of course, it's a musical line. And with, with the Larsen strings, I'm very happy with, with, with this. It's a sound which is round and full in each range, whether it's pianissimo or piano, or fortissimo, mezzo forte, whether it is an accent, whatever I want to do, they react to what I like to do, and I like to do what I think what the score tells me which is very, very different, of course. I feel it different than another cellist, another musician, another listener, but 
of course, I want to do what, what I think should be heard in the music. So I must learn to be the pilot of my plane. <laughs> and the plane, the strings are my, is, is the plane. I'm just the pilot of, of leading that. So we need each other. The plane needs the pilot and the pilot needs the plane. And all needs passengers. <laughs> passengers for me, that's the audience. We all belong together somehow. And we are all depending on the composer of the piece of paper and have in front of me the little black dot notes. So I have to make them alive as a player and a life with quality and I need the good tools for it. So if we, we need all this good quality equipment and strings are sure a big, 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 a huge part of it. And I found out the Il Canone really, they give me the, the best possibilities I, I, I want. Of course, it needs technical instrumental skills to do it and not always, it doesn't work always 100%, sometimes a little too much pressure in the bow or not enough pressure or the speed isn't right, then the string is squeaking even if it's really good or it's scratching or just producing some dirt. But the percentage of how, how, how often everything works well, it's, it's, it's very high. And otherwise it's just a human fault and which is kind of normal, we are not no machines. But I can see, see, I want to have a quality in a short note, open D string, something like this. There's a round, soft note, and not something like this. And some strings, they ca cannot do this. And I, I personally like that, and I want that. I must have it, otherwise I'm not happy as a musician. See, that was bad. That's good. And this is from the Kudai uh, Sonata with piano, second movement starts like that. And a light note like a ricochet, something like this. Yeah, that happens in Stravinsky, Sweet Italian. And this pushing flageolet. While the piano is playing, the Siciliano, which is very soft and very kind of swinging and moving, and the piano and the cello is playing against it. So, and kind of disturbing what's going on in the piano. But after that comes. Getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So this, mm, this fading in sound is so important to it that the string can can make that. After this, the bow is just bumping, bumping and making this kind of strong. And the bow is doing this, and now I have to get everything quiet in the bow, kind of let the sound flow in, coming from nowhere, and it's there all of a sudden, and then like a little sunbeam on the note is going down. And this is, for me, this is utmost beauty, and the score tells me to produce that. So I have to fight for it, and I need the good things to be able to use that. <laughs>